All right, we're back with another episode of I'm in a Car, and I have the pleasure of having uh, Nathan Scofus in the car with us today. So. Yeah, thank you very much for having me on. Yeah, it's my pleasure. I mean, it's uh, a really cool story. Um, Nathan is a world champion, and we're just going to take a couple minutes, like in, like we always do with I'm in a Car, and maybe you can just give us a quick rundown of kind of where you've been coming from, what you've been training on, and like what you're up to these days. Yeah, so I started uh, martial arts. I was six years old when I started. Yeah. Um, here in Guelph, so I've been in the Guelph area uh, my entire life. That's why I feel I have such a connection with it. Yeah. Um, so when I started, a lot of people don't know, like now I've been fortunate. I've, I've won 13 world titles in martial arts total in my career. Yeah, yeah. Um, but there were several points throughout that I really wanted to give up when okay. I was a kid a lot, a lot of times just because the discipline and perseverance, you're, when you're a kid, you're not so focused on those words. You just want to have fun like a kid, right? Sure. Perseverance didn't mean a whole lot to me. Yeah. Um, so I, I wanted to give up. I did. I stuck with it. So I used to play a lot of sports, soccer, basketball, martial arts was just one of them. Yeah. Um, and now, you know, just I th- feel like the, the different perspective it's given me on life. Uh, I think martial arts, yeah, was the best thing that I could have done. I've had, I've been fortunate to do... Um, you know, different. I've seen all over the world now. Yeah, I've been able to train with different MMA fighters, actors, movie stars that all come to our studio in Guelph. Yeah, cool. Um, it's been, yeah, it's been. I've, I've been very humbled by all the stuff I've been able to do through martial arts now. Awesome. So, give us a quick little rundown on that studio you just referenced. What are you up to now? So, uh, Guelph Family Martial Arts. It's been open uh, in Guelph. It's on Woodlawn Road for the last four years. Yeah. So when we kind of started, um, I thought, you know, a lot of people if you say, hey, what is karate about? What's martial arts about? They'd say, you know, you're going to learn to punch, you're going to learn to kick, you're going to defend yourself. Right. You know, common common thing, a lot of people view it as a combat, which, you know, definitely it develops you physically, but I think the main thing that I learned and I thought, you know, martial arts training would just have a positive impact on the community here. Right. Um, developing things like, you know, modesty, courtesy, self-confidence, uh, stress coping strategy. I think for children and adults, I think it's, it's a super important thing. Yeah. Um, so kind of when I was starting that, I thought... You know, I was starting my first year of university when I started my school. Yeah, okay. So a lot of people say, you know, just focus on being a student. Right. You know, uh, just do that. You shouldn't take any more on. But I just thought, yeah, martial arts training, just the way that it develops um, personal growth through martial arts training, I thought was the reason I needed to open it. So it's just the, the amount of support that the Guelph community, and even we have people come from Hamilton, outside of the country to come train with us. Yeah. Um, yeah, the amount of support's been, you know, amazing. I can't I can't repay for the Guelph community. Thank you, everybody, for does support us um but yeah it's been it's been an amazing thing and just to see where it goes from the future yeah cool you know? and you're saying the you got three thousand square feet and you might that might not be enough anymore yeah now like there's a, a joke everybody says they're like you know you need to find a two-tier place or whatever and when when we started right three thousand square feet is was a it was you know it was a massive Plus. facility yeah and now we run classes so we started with two classes a day now we run like six to seven classes every day two awesome. classes yeah. yeah 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 and then I do like personal like one on one training so it started as like a three hour kind of teaching thing and it's moved to like I'm there all day almost now yeah yeah um, but yeah we're looking for something big in Guelph too to find something bigger than 3,000 square feet I think is very very difficult but well good luck with that <laughs> so um, 13 world championships that is not a small feat for any discipline uh, let alone martial arts so um can you can you give us a bit of a an idea because i think there's a lot of parallels when it comes to performance in life doesn't matter really what it's in whether it's in martial arts sport whether it's in business even relationships um there's all kind of common parallels across all the things that create success whatever that might be for people so for you 13 championships world championships i mean you're at the top of the game with the stuff that you're doing what kind of things do you have to practice or what's kind of attributed the most to that kind of outcome? I think definitely the opportunity. That's why I felt, you know, where I had opportunities to go to school in, you know, Toronto, different cities. But I thought, you know, I really want to stay in Guelph because I've been here. I've had a lot of opportunities just from being here. Yeah. Um, and I think the biggest thing that I could say, I had a lot of support along the way. Whether that was family members or um, my mom was a big influence. Right. Um, from the time I started, she kind of tried to keep me in the sport university as well. She said, you know, you need to get that university education. Mm-hmm. Um, dedication, of course. You know, I think everything, just as you said, everything has been done. Everything's been done in different, like, you know, if it's a business, if it's a relationship, if it's a martial arts, if it's basketball. Right. I think being a champion is more than, you know, just a title. I think all those people share common traits. Um, I think things like dedication, for sure. You know, it took me 10 years to get my black belt. It takes the average person three to four years. Right. 
like there's people who do it quicker than that. And, sure. And uh, you know, it took me 10 years, but when I got it, I felt I actually had, had learned the skill. So dedication for sure, um, perseverance. Because a lot of people see, you know, they go, oh, you won a world title. But a lot of people, if you would ask them 15, 16 years ago, they wouldn't have thought I would get my yellow belt. Because, <laughs> you know, like. Um, so then how do you how do you flip that around? How do you go from, uh, I'm going to quit, I'm not going to get my yellow belt, to 13-time <laughs> world champion? Yeah, it's crazy now looking back at it. Because I think something I'm trying to do now, you just try to enjoy the moment. Because when you're so, when I was like... 15. I'm, I'm still pretty young, but you know, I've been through it enough now. Yeah. Uh, that you're so focused on the end goal that you don't appreciate the stops along the way. Right. So now I'm kind of trying to look around, you know, and um, appreciate it. But yeah, and, and I remember this. This is a true story. I was training in London, Ontario, with uh, this school is really good. We went as a team from Guelph. We went down, and I was sparring. I was working out with some of the guys on the team, yeah. and I wasn't good, but I thought I was okay. Right. Yeah, yeah, you're yeah, a kid, yeah. and uh, <laughs> the one instructor. Uh, said to my instructor, to my parents, you need to take your son out of sparring, which was the fighting side of martial arts. He'll never be good. It's He's he's not never going to reach his goal. You're just wasting your time. Okay. So as a kid, I, you know, somebody told me that and I took it, I obviously took it hard. I wasn't as resilient as I am now. Now, kind of, you got to be bulletproof. There's a lot of people that, you know, you're never going to make everyone happy, but it kind of, you got to let it bounce off. Sure. At the time though, I could have, you know, given up that negative comment, but I tried to use it as you know, fuel to the fire, use it as motivation to reach my goal. Yeah. And then when I won my first Canadian title, she was actually there. The person that said it. Said it. She's in the chairs and I, so I fought, <laughs> at 13 years old, I was almost the same size I am now, just a little bit smaller. Yeah. yeah. People used to say, it's not fair for you to fight kids your own age. Right. You know, people were just trying to find something. They said, uh, you know, you're, you're clearly going to win. You're too big. You're too this. So I said, okay, I'm going to fight as an adult. So I'm going to fight 30 year old. 35 year old guys when you're 15 when I'm 13 15 yeah wow. and uh, so people said you're gonna get hurt it's not a good choice so I enter the tournament and I I'm, I'm, I won the first few matches and then I draw in the final this really like world champion so when I was training I trained with this guy this would have been early on when I was picking a program to go with and he beat me like an hour I didn't hit him like beat me like the worst someone has ever beat me and then I draw him in the final match like a few years later crazy so people like I'll tell people I'd be like this is who I'm fighting in the final they'd be like oh uh -oh. they just say oh they wouldn't even say like good luck good luck they'd be like oh man <laughs> so uh, we fought and I won I beat him and people were shocked like you know a kid and I remember the promoter came up to me and said don't tell people your real age because we'll both get in trouble about this <laughs> they shouldn't have it um, and then kind of from there so the his wife was there and she said you remember who this was and she goes no I don't remember um, and then he told her and she goes oh my gosh and, you know I think at the time that's one thing if I said I was ever going to teach anyone try to be positive because I think there's enough negative influences for her to say that to me I think if she said that to 999 other kids right it could have caused them to quit yeah um, so I feel that was that was definitely hard on me but it pushed me to kind of so so how what kind of things were you doing that made it so that as a 13 year old you could beat a world champion at all yeah I was so I was, I was pretty big, like, by size-wise, and uh, I think people perceived me that I was older just based on that. Uh, I used to train, though, with adults all the time, so I would spar with adults, like, and they wouldn't take it easy on me, because yeah. I won my first world title, and, yeah, I was, like, 12, 13 years old, so they would take it hard, because they're like, oh, you're a world champ, so they would try to, they would really come at you, um, and having, obviously, an older brother and instructors that didn't take it easy on you yeah. um, kind of set me up for that. I feel like, though, um, the self-confidence that I had in myself through martial arts training um, and even even if I was to lose, people say, you know, what happens if you go to the Olympics or you go to the UFC and you, you lose? I have other things outside of competing. If my life doesn't rely on it, right? Um, you know, it's just one thing. You're either going to win that tournament or you're going to learn from it. I don't think you failed. Cool. Or, you know. Well, that's a big lesson I think for a lot of people that a lot of people kind of uh, overlook. Yeah. Uh, in terms of how they experience failure. So I mean, I think you kind of you know you breezed by that idea, but that's pretty significant. You go to a tournament, you either win it or you learn something. It's never really a failure. That's cool. Yeah. So you uh, you had a chance to train with George St. Pierre. Yeah, George St. Pierre. Um, so right after the Quebec Open, Hayabusa, which is like the biggest sponsor in martial arts, contacted me after my first year as competing as an adult. Right. And they and I was part of the professional karate team for Hayabusa. So after the Quebec Open, we went to TriStar and we trained with like George St. Pierre. Roy McDonald was there, uh, Faraz Sahabi, which is their head coach. So it was definitely a wild experience because, you know, when I was a kid with my friends, I used to play video games with George St. Pierre or <laughs> yeah. Stephen Wonderboy Thompson, just these different martial artists that I've, I've had the opportunity to meet now. Um, and different, you know, like Olympians, actors. It's been, yeah, crazy. 
thing that I've been fortunate to do. So what was it like training with him? Definitely, it's it's weird, right? Because you're you're there, you know, you you have an idea of what someone's gonna be like, and then he really walks in. Yeah. And I was like 19. 1920 mm-hmm. and all the other guys in the room are like 30 35 so it's right. like you're a 19 year old kid you're trying to take it in you're trying to go you know we're gonna work out you don't want to be starstruck but it was definitely cool to see you know how far martial arts has brought me yeah from when to quit to now you know you're being part of a ufc training camp for you know one of the best martial artists in the ufc so it's uh, definitely full circle for me now cool and so what was the actual training like? Was it harder than what you normally do? Or was it like, uh, I, I kind of do this all the time? I train hard like all the time. That's one thing um, a lot of people come and work out with me. And they go, man, you really work out hard. Because I think natural talent, I never had natural talent. <laughs> I couldn't touch. like So I'm going to, my brother did martial arts too. This is actually a, this is a true story. And they take a photo of you when you're starting. So mine was like my hands up or like a punch or something in a white belt. Yeah. And his was a full splits. <laughs> <laughs> and then my, my everyone's like, man, your brother's gonna be good. You, you yeah. always is like your brother. Yeah. Nobody ever said about me. And uh, yeah, the training I do is really physically demanding in my own studio. Like I, I do, I train myself hard. A lot of people I think weren't prepared for the training we did, but I was. We were doing like three day workouts before we got to try there because we went the last would have been the last part of the week there. So we trained just as our team first. Right. So we're doing like two or three workouts a day for two or three hours. So a lot of guys when they got there were like. They were done. unempty. Yeah, they yeah. had nothing left. So yeah. it was it was definitely, yeah, definitely tiring at, ahead of getting there. Yeah. And then when we got there, you know, sparring with people and you go, you just think it's a normal guy and you, you spar with them. And then after they go, yeah, my UFC light heavyweight. And you're like, oh, all right. And I was, you know, like 19, but yeah. Crazy. So uh, we were talking just quickly about the idea of um, an opponent. So I had the honor of having Mandy Bujo uh, on the show. I don't know if you know who she is, but she's, uh, uh, I think, 11-time... Pan American gold medalist, uh, world champion, uh, female boxer, and so we're in that series. We're talking about the idea of the opponent of the person that's you know coming at you, but then the opponent between your ears. And so, what kind of things have you had to learn or train yourself on to be able to have the mindset to win at that level? I, th- I think physically, everyone's really good. If you watch a lot of people in the gym working out, hitting a bag, you'll go, you know, that's that could be a world champion. I think, but when you get under the lights, it's a pressure situation. Um, you really have to believe in yourself. And that's one thing, like, I, I believed in myself because when I started martial arts, the only person that really believed in me was my mom and me. Mm-hmm. So now to get this to this point, I think your yourself, that's the only real opponent you have. Right. I think the other people you're just matching up with. Mm-hmm. Um, and we one, one quote that has really stuck with me, somebody told me, um, if you have no enemy within you, the enemy from outside can do you no harm. So, you know, if you don't believe in yourself, somebody else telling you it is not going to affect you. So yeah. that, that's the thing because a lot of people... You know, we call it when you win your first world title, there's a lot of people who are one hit world champion wonders. Right. And then to repeat is difficult because you kind of become, when you reach it. You're like, yeah, I'm done. I yeah, did the, it. The hunger is gone for a lot mm-hmm. of people because they've reached that goal. Right. And, you know, for me, I, I don't I don't try to rely on like a goal. I, sure, I said it. And I think working hard, those goals will all happen. But I not I try not to just say that's my goal. And when I reach it, that's all that that's it's going to be. Yeah. So you just keep pushing. I think you have to strive for excellence and perfection, even though you'll never reach perfection, right? Nobody's going to be perfect. I think that's what gets you up every morning, trying to get as close as you can to that. Cool. So then when you get kicked in the head yeah. or somebody rings your bell, mm-hmm. what's the, what goes through your head? What do you say to yourself? You, when you're when you're starting martial arts, you think when somebody hits me, I'm going to try to see red and go after them. But I think martial arts teaches you just to stay calm because when you get a, aggressive, especially with a trained you know, these people are trained martial artists. It's not like, you know, you're just... It's not a bar fight. Yeah. yeah, you're fighting somebody who, you know, you come too much ahead and bang, they just need that one inch space and they drop you. Yeah. Uh, you you know, I'm a really competitive person, so obviously when you get hit, it's not a... You're, you try to get them back. But now, you know, it's, I, I feel it's part of the sport. And I feel like if you train, people say, you know, martial arts is so dangerous. Right. I don't feel that it really is. You know, I think if you train yourself, it's, it's pretty safe if you train with a good program and you learn your defense. Right. I think things like football... Hockey. Well, yeah, People go to me. Would you play that? I go. No, no, that's dangerous. <laughs> martial arts, though. I. I so okay. when when someone does hit you, what do you say to yourself? What what goes in your what, what's going through your mind when you're in a ring with somebody? I think in a ring you've just gotta you've gotta block the fear out. And so what kind of things do you say to yourself? Now I just say let's let's do it. We, we you know we've we've done it before. That's what I kind of I, I try to tell myself. You know I'm not. Um, people go like even when I got back from the World Championships a few it would have been a few weeks ago. People said, Are you really nervous going in? 
because I, you know, I had in my head, I try not to see an end goal, right. but I realized if I had one NBL and NASC in the same year, it would be the first time someone had ever done that. Right. So it's a lot, and you so know, it's kind of daunting. Yeah. It was like, but I'm trying to block it out. So I, I made it to the final. So I'm walking out to the stage and a lot of people are like, man, if you made it to stage and you lose like that, you, you'll, you'll, it might never happen again. Right. Because you never know the end of the tunnel. You hope it goes on forever, but you know there's going to be an end point. Sure. So I'm coming out, and, uh, you know, I'm trying to disconnect from that end goal. I know, obviously, how much it would mean to me. I've studied the great martial artist, and to achieve that would be surreal. Yeah. So I blocked it out, and when I won, so I won, and the clock went to zero. You know, I turned back, and I was like, right. like I was thinking to the next match, but I'm like, oh, like I'm trying to shake off. People are like, you did it. You achieved your, your goal. But I think now I'm training harder because I want to do it again. But, yeah, when somebody hits me, or I'm, I'm looking across from somebody. Um, I think I just view it as like a competition, just like if you play soccer against someone. It's yeah. not malicious. Yeah, they got you. Yeah, it's just you're gonna you're gonna do it. We're gonna, you know, however many minutes we're gonna fight. And I think you honestly have to believe in yourself above all things because there's gonna be a lot of roadblocks. It's not gonna be just the high times. It's gonna be the low times that you've gotta bounce back from. Yeah, that's cool. And so when you're with GSP, was there any like words of wisdom that he he threw past you that kind of stuck? Yeah, he was, so he was training, he would have been coming back for that, the Bisping fight. Yeah, yeah. So he was training a lot, so it was like his first time back. I talked to him a little, he was a super nice guy. You know, I think that's one true martial artist. And a lot of people view MMA now because it's so big, they want to do mixed martial arts, right? Right. I think learn the martial arts first. Because the martial arts, the things like respect, right. modesty, being humble, those are those are life skills. Right. Um, he, I learned a lot from him. Um, mentors that I've had, I think the, you know, Faraz, his coach, he's really wise, um, and I think the influence that he has on fighters is, is really important. I think the biggest mentor, though, for honestly, for me, uh, was my mom. Yeah. Yeah, really. She's been involved. She started her first business. She was 20. Mm-hmm. She doesn't like talking about it, so she'll hear this. She'll say, uh, you know. Um, <laughs> but, Shout out to Sophie. Yeah, right? Thanks, Mom. Won't. It's okay. But it's the, not only competitively, she's guided me along the whole whole journey. Um, she's been, uh, you know, in the in behind the scenes a lot, but everything that I've done, she's guided. But professionally as well, you know, she said, you're going to get your black belt when I want to quit. Too bad you're going to get your black belt. You're going to get your university degree. Um, and now she started our charity gala that we're fortunate to do. But she had didn't have the same opportunities that I had. Right. She came from a, a European family who was coming to Canada, um, you know, and she's invested. She's been selfless. She's put all her time into me, honestly. Yeah. She's the type of parent, if she didn't have whatever it might be, she would give it to me first. Um, and I think that's that's definitely commendable. Um for her to be like that and it's it's definitely rubbed off on me for sure well thanks for being on the show hey thank you so much cheers all right see you guys thank you